Coming up right now, some people are questioning the aging rule of politics as some familiar faces throw their names back into the game. Also coming up, Queen Bee made her concert a labor of love for one fan who wasn't expecting a special delivery. We will explain. <laughs> and later, Jimmy Fallon issues a late night apology after allegations of a toxic work environment. We have got your trending news and entertainment starting right now on Daily Flash. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. And I am Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash, an hour packed full of trendy news and entertainment. And we're going to have some fun today for sure. Trending today, there is a job for a reporter just listed for Gannett, which produces USA Today okay. and other papers around the country, for a Taylor Swift reporter. A, sw a Swift reporter or a, a Taylor Swift reporter? A Taylor Swift reporter. <laughs> a Swifty. A Swifty reporter. A Swifty, if you will. And what this, will they do? This will pay up to 50 bucks an hour. You will travel around and you will report on everything Taylor Swift. Wow. Yes. So I guess the remainder of her tour then. Yes, and then she's that. got a new album coming up. So they plan on hiring somebody specifically to cover the Taylor Swift beat. Because they're saying <laughs> she's had such an economic impact on a number of these places where she's gone to perform her concerts. They think at this point it's something that could be economic and business related. So it sort of falls into their umbrella of information. I remember reading about throughout the entire nation, this whole yeah. tour brought about $4.6 billion, yeah. something. I mean, I mean, we're talking about billions. Right. I mean, and one city, I mean, you talk about hotels, uh, security, pe uh, extra people they have to hire, yes. promotional stuff, t-shirts, merchandise and everything, just for one city, is it's crazy. Can you imagine being that successful? You know what I'm saying? Outside of what you are, like she's a, a business. And yeah, stuff. yeah, she is a business. So they will hire this reporter, not only to report for USA Today, but also the Tennessean. And then all their other, you know, outlets across the country. Oh, the Tennessee. The Tennessee. Well, which yes. makes sense because Nashville. She's from, and she's from Tennessee. And Tennessee, mm -hmm. and, and music is yeah. kind of like, no. All right. You're going to stay with me, right? Stay okay, here. all right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get political a little okay. bit here, but not the way you think, because former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi recently announced that she is going to run for re election in 2024. Now, she first made the announcement in San Francisco during her quarterly Politics and Eggs breakfast, both of them very scrambled. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Two shows nightly. Uh, anyway, he did, she did it obviously with her supporters and volunteers, and all of them were in support of it. Can you it's believe it? All of them. Shocking. So the cameras were there saying, look how these people support it. Well, that's because she was in front of her <laughs> supporters. Anyway, the campaign said Pelosi's priority is to ensure that come 2025, she is serving alongside a reelected President Joe Biden, who a lot of people joke about his age as well. <laughs> Pelosi's 83 years old. She was first elected in Congress back in 87. She became the first woman to hold the House Speakership back in 2007 and was elected by her peers to serve the top position again in 2019. Now, even though Pelosi steered her party through four presidents, it does bring up the question, should there be age limits mm -hmm. or even term limits when it comes to those serving in politics? I know I'm smarter as I gotten older. But I don't know if I make the right decisions, the same decisions I made when I was younger. There's something to be said, you know, with age comes wisdom. So you, you think with these politicians who've served in office and, you know, not having term limits gives them the opportunity to develop contacts and perspective that might be difficult for somebody who might only be in the That's office one or two terms, right? But when you're talking about politicians, Nancy Pelosi, Senator Dianne Feinstein, whose daughter has now sort of got this, the... This, this, yeah, continue on. No, 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 this, this blows my mind. She has power, power. of attorney for it, meaning that she's the one can make decisions. And yet she's being elected to, you know, God bless. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's nothing about I it. Know. It's like, hey, look, time. let somebody else come in and you maybe can mentor them and go in in that, that fashion. And it's not to say that some 80-year-olds are not as young and smart as a 50-year-old. There's no question there. They're, they're, those are the exceptions, though. And I think when you're talking about Nancy Pelosi serving another six years, that puts her close to 90 <laughs> years old. And I just think maybe it's time for for some of these folks to step aside and give somebody new a chance. I know as I'm getting old, I, don't, I, I ain't listening to that. I'm holding <laughs> up. I know what I'm doing. Right? 
but there's a thing when you're a politician, you need to listen to your constituents. And you got it. And, and I think sometimes you get set in your way. And also, when going back to term limits, maybe yeah. not age limits, but term limits, you go, look, I got four years to get this accomplished. Yes. I got it, or eight years, or however yeah. many years. I, this amount of time, I need to get it done. If you know that you're not getting that job afterwards, yeah. it seems like I'd be a little bit more motivated to make sure that happens. Uh, Nikki Haley, who's running for a Republican presidential candidate, calls Washington, D.C. the most privileged nursing home in America. <laughs> With the best <laughs> applesauce in the world, you got right? that right. right. Jello for all my friends. And, and listen, yeah, listen. I realize I'm I'm not I'm a few years away from all of that too, so I want everybody <laughs> to know that. But still, I think when it's time to sit down, it's time to step down. Yes, it is one of the biggest concerts going on, and it's definitely one a California mom will never forget. Sarah Frances Jones, who was pregnant, did not want to miss Beyonce's show in Los Angeles. She thought she'd be fine since she had a cesarean section scheduled a week after the show, but her baby had other <laughs> ideas when. Beyonce started singing Virgo's Groove, the baby wanted to join in on the fun. At first, Jones thought the moves were just false contractions, but on the way home, she knew <laughs> she had to go right to the hospital. Jones said it was a perfect set of circumstances going into labor on Labor Day with a Virgo baby after a Queen Bay concert. A bay, 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 bay. A bay lots bay. of bay. That's, well, you know, and they say stay on your feet, do a lot of walking when mm -hmm. you're on those last stages, having, uh, you know, as many kids as I have. I've learned you that know. enough. So it probably was a good idea. The loud music I'd be a little concerned about. Yeah. But uh, maybe she was back far enough to where it didn't. And that bass boom, can really does something in, yeah. when you're at concerts. Current staff members at The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon have slammed bombshell reports of a toxic workplace, insisting the presenter goes above and beyond to ensure his staff feels like a family. Rolling Stone published this story alleging concerns by 14 former employees as well as two current workers about Fallon's supposed erratic workplace conduct and interactions with other bosses. They claim the host's inconsistent behavior, which includes outbursts towards co-workers, was the starting point for a pretty gloomy atmosphere with some alleging it triggered suicidal thoughts. While Fallon reported issued, uh, reportedly issued an apology to his staff, telling them that he feels bad and embarrassed about this scandal, many employees insist that, that the allegations are just not true. It's a reflection of his character or their workplace at all. Some say that he came to work inebriated and uh, that he would, say he would cut jokes. He was with Jerry Seinfeld doing something, and he started yelling at the, uh, the Q card guy and Jerry's like are you gonna apologize to him and so they're using that however Jerry's come out and said no I never felt that they blew that out of proportion right. and, and look Rolling Stone has been questioned in the past for certain stories they've reported on that have turned a different corner Duke, once all the facts uh, came team, yeah right the Duke yeah. lacrosse yeah. team as, as well as several others but yeah Jerry Seinfeld came out told the New York Post hey they blew this completely out of proportion they asked me for comment I didn't think it was worthy of a comment because it was just a ridiculous funny moment and we turned it into a bit yes and so now he's been forced to come out and make a comment on it and we're talking 14 former employees who they spoke with, with two current employees. And, and you can talk about, there's a massive uh, amount of staff yeah. that goes along with that too. And uh, I guess people just want another Ellen controversy. I guess, uh, it's kind possible, of but if you think about it, it's like the workforce these days, if you're employing a younger generation, there's a certain amount of entitlement that comes I to it. And, and feelings get hurt a lot easier. So there's a whole different take. I don't think they would be able to survive the David Letterman's or the Johnny Carson's. No, or, or I, and to some aspect, even uh, Jimmy uh, uh, the Kimmel. Kimmel, because they all had that, that, that sarcastic Mm -hmm. attitude you kind of know what you want where yep. a, a, a Jimmy Fallon's kind of like everybody's favorite nephew yes. you know and, and you want him to do well all right a New York speaking of New York shows comedian broke a uh, record by arranging 13 donuts into a stack in just one minute Robin Shaw said she decided to take on the record for the tallest stack of donuts in one minute while creating her list of goals in 2023 she looked up the records involving donuts and found that record for stacking the treats stood at 12 and just 60 seconds Ooh. she said that she had to learn how to make donuts because it was difficult to find the ones required for the contest. Shaw also took on the record during a live episode of Sports Talk Prime, stacking all three donuts. So we here at Daily Flash, we want to see if we can beat her Ooh, record here okay. and stack 13 donuts in go. just some time. There we got go. uh, yeah. Matt being our referee here. It's a napkin for everybody. This doesn't seem like it's going to be that difficult. I think we can do 13 I do too. easily as pie. Matt, right. what's the rules here? You got 30 you seconds to stack as many as you can. All right. okay. Which have, start wherever you want. Okay. okay. You guys ready? And, yeah. and, 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 and what a stack St would, do, would we make up? Okay, straight so they up, have to stack, not a pyramid. A tower. Yeah. All right, a tower. Are All you right. ready? Yep. Here we go. In three, two, one stack. All right. I'm just right there's one on Mitch. I'm gonna go with a little sticky uh, in the halfway. Dre runs ahead with four. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, here we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Andrea running way ahead there. I'm gonna try the two. Oh, here we go. 
Oh, alrighty. Oh, 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 it's falling. If it falls, you gotta start back over. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Let him go. Oh. <laughs> it's a draw. It's a draw. Oh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How many did you just, one, just two, You got twelve yeah. as well, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they both fell. So. Five, uh, five. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now we're gonna have a donating contest. Donuts for all my friends. Right, right, right now, you're fake. Why is the white powdered donut easier. always? Well, it's easier, but it, when in a box, it's always the last one. No one ever you're wants right. it. Yes. I, I don't know. Around here, know. you'd think. It's Ew. always the last one, no matter what. We got more flash and more fun coming up right after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. Since the pandemic, the tipping culture in the U.S. has exploded. Nearly every cash register you go to has a screen yeah. asking you one more question. Some consumers have had enough calling it tipping fatigue. And here to talk about it. Let me pause for a second. Chef, you, you have to excuse our producers. Here's what they wrote. Here to talk about it is the most beautiful chef we have ever seen on air, Chef Adrian. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh my goodness. Oh, such kind words. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, we talk about tipping fatigue and it's something that's, it's funny because I was just talking about this with my mom who was, getting a to-go order, something that she actually packaged herself, drove herself there, put it back in her car herself, and was asked to tip 20%. And she actually asked me, hey, Adri, is this what's going on now? And you have to look back on tipping culture, how it started. In the late 19th century, in Europe, it was very rarely adopted in the United States and looked at as bribery. If you look at tipping culture in Japan and South Korea, it's looked at as rude. What that tells you is that it's something since the beginning of tipping, it has been ever changing and evolving. I do believe since the pandemic now, um, it's something that restaurants just to keep their, their staff, or keep them happy, keep them paid well, have adopted tipping in almost every aspect. Let me ask you this, when should we tip and when can we pass? Because I had, I've had i had similar experiences as your mom. You go to a place, you, you place your own order, you pick it up at the counter, and yet they're still asking you for a tip. And I gotta be honest, I'm nervous. If I don't leave a tip, I'm, I'm worried something <laughs> might happen with my order. I'm sure it doesn't, but you know, the thought does cross my mind. Well, my rule of thumb is I do believe there's no right or wrong answer here. But I do think that if you're in a position where you can give even when it doesn't seem right, do so. Because this is for the service industry. This is not for, um, how can I say, uh, th this is not for nurses and doctors and essential workers, really. This is These are people that are providing us joy, happiness. And if we are in a fortunate position of giving, let's make these service, um, service team members happy to be in this service industry. Because I will say service is dying. It's dying out. Um, less and less people want to serve others for just the art of it, for the, the personal reward of putting a smile on someone's face. Um, and I do think that if those of us that are in a position to, to be giving, extra giving, even when it's not required, I do think that's something nice. Um, but I do think standard is if you're not being provided a service at a table where you are, you are not doing the service yourself, it is not something that is required. Yeah. I think that's a great perspective. I know we've talked about it on the show. Some places are now asking for a tip at self-checkouts, like at some of the right. stadiums, you can go in and get a beer from, you know, a, a vending machine and it's asking you for a tip. Yes, because that took somebody to load that machine and probably will take somebody to clean that machine. And with rising costs also of labor, these are ways that they offset it. So it's part of a bigger picture. And I think those of us, again, that are in the position to give allow allow service to stay you know restaurants um even self-checkouts convenience lines all of that to to stay in service when we give what about hitting the no tip button i'm again i do think that if you have that conviction of no tip because either you can't or you don't you don't see the that you've you've been given a service you don't see that value 
then that's okay too, because again, tipping is not required. And let me ask you this, Chef Adrian. There's been talk of some restaurants getting rid of tipping altogether, and I'm assuming maybe it's made up for in the menu costs, or sometimes in Europe yeah. they add the tipping into the bill, so that's already automatically added. What's your take? They are still getting tipped. It's just already put into, it might be called a service charge. It might be built into the cost of the dishes that you're ordering, um, but it will be, you know, fold it in there, but to the guest, it's not looked at as tipping. So maybe it's an easier digest for the guest, but no matter what, if you are receiving a service in a restaurant, our servers, our service team does need, you know, to 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 earn their wages and, and that is through tipping. What are some of the rules when it comes to tipping at your restaurant? I mean, it used to be back in the day, it was 10% for okay service, 15% for decent service, and 20% for a little extra. Now those numbers have really bumped up. We're looking at 18, 20, 25, in some places, 30%. Well, um, at my restaurants, um, tipping, again, is not required. Um, we do require it parties of six or more. Um, when you are a party of six or more, you do get a 20% um, service gratuity charge onto your bill. But again, it is really not required. The guests can debate that because we do stand by that tipping gratuity is, it, it's a gracious act, you know, but um, we do suggest 20% for parties of six or more. And if someone does not tip at the restaurant, what, what do you do? What do you tell your staff members? You know, um, we've been very fortunate that our clientele at Chef Adrian's and Cracked by Chef Adrian, um, I, I think they're very grateful for the, the type of service that we provide. And um, they've been very kind with our service team. It happens very, very seldom. Um, and we're very proud of that. We just kind of take it on the chin and we're like, hey, next time it won't happen. It doesn't really, it's not common. And what professions do you believe should be on the no tip necessary list if you had one? Oh my gosh, um, that's such a, a <laughs> it's such a hard question. I do believe that anything that is not a service, um, like a human service, should not be tipped. Um, that, how can I say? Because like, let's say a masseuse goes to your to your home to give you a massage, they they should get a tip because it's something that's outside of the norm. They're doing it for you. They're making you feel wonderful. And if they go above and beyond, they deserve a tip. Adrian, you know, thank uh, you so much. It was so great having you. We want you in studio you. next time. AdrianCalvo.com. Daily Flash is back right after this. In this week's Boss Lady, we call on our health and wellness expert, Dr. Romy, for advice on everything with regards to stress. And she's joining us this morning from Chicago. Dr. Romy is the CEO and founder of the Brain Shift Institute. Dr. Romy, good to see you. Good morning, Andrea. Thank you all for having me join you this morning. Let me start with this. Your journey, Dr. Romy, started with a near-death experience. Tell us about it. You know, I grew up with one success mantra in mind, Andrea, which was to grow up to become a doctor and working 120 hour work weeks was so many of your viewers can relate to took its toll on my brain and physical health. And I ended up in life saving surgery as a doctor, as a brain doctor, I should have known better what stress could do. And it completely changed the way I not only took care of my health, but now that I focus on the health of individuals that I work with and large companies and teams. What should we be aware of and how can we go ahead and take a busy brain quiz? Andrea, one of the things we see with working with high performing professionals and moms staying at home is that we feel anxious all day or think we can't focus and we keep picking up the phone or you have multiple browser windows open on your computer and then you can't wind down at night and you may need some alcohol or even a sleeping pill to feel calm. Those are all symptoms of what we call a busy brain, that you're addicted to caffeine or a stimulant like Adderall all day and some type of sedative to calm you down at night. So those are the symptoms of a busy brain and a sign that your brain is and body are under chronic stress. We have a, what we call the neuropsychology test known as a busy brain test that you can take 
and get a score. And I don't know if anybody in your new studio took it yet, Andrea, but we email you a solution the first two weeks of our eight week protocol. That's a part of my upcoming book, The Busy Brain Cure. I'm guessing part of that protocol is limiting your time on social media. Andrea, you know me well, <laughs> and also we all need our devices and social media all day. What we do is say have quick shifts and blocks. And so be mindful in the breaks you take during the day if you need social media for work and if you want social media for your personal life. But part of that protocol is absolutely powering down and digital detox for 30 to 60 minutes prior to bedtime. Our research and the teams that we put this through, it has a profound effect on resetting the busy brain and helping people um, manage their weight stop the carb cravings, find focus, tame anxiety, and sleep again. Uh, you mentioned sleep. What's another thing we can do to quiet a busy brain? Because I know part of your sleep quiz involves asking questions about your sleep habits. The biggest mistake you can do is pick up your phone and start scrolling through your work emails or your calendar. That light is going to wake you up. We have free resources on how to put yourself back to sleep, whether it's mindfulness techniques, but also that talking to your doctor, could it be a sign of something more serious? Your blood sugar management, uh, early sign of diabetes, thyroid is off. And Andrea, what we find is the most common cause of waking up in the middle of the night, that you had even one glass of alcohol, wine or a cocktail or a beer before bed. And so we ask people to abstain for seven to 14 days to reset their busy brains. Dr. Romy, always great to see you. Thank you for your great advice. We've got more information how you can find Dr. Romy. Here it is, drromy.com is the website. And there's also that QR code right there on your screen. Zap that, you can take her free brain quiz. Dr. Romy, thank you. All right, thank you, Andrea. Hey, in today's KSA Cares, we go to Crestview, Florida, where one company saw a need to help their community in a very giving and relaxing way. Aaron, too, he's the owner of Waltz Cabinetry, wanted to find a way to help their local elementary school. So who is the best person to ask? That's the school principal, who just happens to be his wife. We well, found out that teachers at the school get pretty stressed out at the end of the day and a little decompressing would really make their day. So his solution, a donation of not one, but two $13,000 massage chairs for a new teacher's retreat lounge. Two told the entire staff that it was important for all of them to know what a difference a teacher can make in someone's life. I want you to know that we know that you matter. Then we um, we've got big, nice schools, we've got books, we've got all kinds of stuff. But at the end of the day, you are what counts. That's what we know, that you are what counts. You People are changes lives. You are, you just matter. Just know that the reason that we did what we did is because you matter. We envision like you coming in there with, finding a friend and y'all sitting down and just relaxing and having a cup of tea chat, not about school. And uh, just take your mind off it all for a few moments and just, just take that crown off just for a second. And just see you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The nearly $30,000 massage chairs are for teachers only. Mrs. Two, the school principal, wanted to make note that there are no distractions in the teacher's relaxation room, and that includes no clocks, because that's their time to relax and realize how important their own time is, thus making the time with the students so much better. Knowing that they are giving uh, a, a, so much of their day away for your kids, so just let them relax. It's gonna make them in the long run and the students so much, much better uh, to learn. I love the no clocks and the no distractions. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you need that, right? <laughs> for relax. sure. We got more trendy news and entertainment and more fun coming up right after this. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. And I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. All right. If you know anything about me, you hear me talking about it all the time. When I'm hitting the roads, I, I have a lead foot, you know. Matter you of do. fact, in the state of Georgia, and this is no joke, I am uh, on record as what they call a super speeder. <laughs> And, and it's really? a category where if you go over a certain amount of miles speeding, yes. they categorize you as this, and it's on there. So if I get pulled over, it'll say, this man's a super speeder. Super speeder. So much so, I don't know if I told you this, I was getting uh, uh, life insurance, 
and they first they said, well, it's going to be this amount, say like 250 bucks, and then they go, and then they go, but we have to run a report on you. They come back and they said it's going to be 1500 dollars a month because they found out I was a super speeder, right? Now, had I known this, I think it might have helped me out a little bit. But folks up at Boston College, researchers there, had said if you want to get out of a speeding ticket, the best way to do it is beforehand, prepare for it. When you get your picture taken, okay, um, getting your driver's license, smile. And they say uh, that police officers will have a tendency to give uh, less tickets. They'll let you off. It's like, all right, this guy's, she's just probably doesn't realize what's going on. Slow it down. And also puts them in a better mood somewhat as far as the research If you goes. have a smiling picture yes. on your driver's license. Until when I got my uh, license uh, here, <laughs> I, I did it and I was doing one of Showtime. these. Can, can we? Yeah, I did this. Can I, <laughs> sh I would love to show you my picture, but I was like one of these. I, I, always, I don't wear my glasses. I'm like. And they're like, smile normal. And I'm like, no, this is how I want to do it. They wouldn't take the picture until I went, like, I get them to have like a, like a regular smile. So the smile picture I have, and my theory is, if your driver's license picture, you never look good in no matter what. No. If I could say, well, I was being goofy on purpose yes. in that way. So anyway, try that out it's, if you're getting new pictures or maybe if you're just turning uh, 16 and getting your driver's license, smile Forget nice and Forget showing any personality on your passport photo. That's true. That they, is they, a nightmare. They, they, you can't they, smile. You can't even turn up a corner of your mouth. It just has to be like a... That is true. <laughs> like they, they, a mugshot. They're, they're dead serious about that. Yeah, you do. It, your, your passport is your mugshot. And it's if you, uh, you do something wrong, that is the picture yeah. that people use and show Which the Which I don't know why. Like, why do you have to be like so... I, I guess maybe other countries might not ex under, understand yeah. the, the... I don't know. I, I agree with you. I was like, and you're going to have a passport you have for years. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's get a little political here. All right. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi recently announced she will run for re-election in 2024. She first made the announcement in San Francisco during her quarterly politics and eggs breakfast event with supporters and volunteers. The campaign said Pelosi's priority is to ensure that come 2025, she's serving alongside a re-elected President Joe Biden. The 83-year-old Pelosi, 83-year-old Pelosi, 83-year-old Pelosi wow. was first elected to Congress in 1987. She became the first woman to hold the House Speakership in 2007, was elected by her peers to serve in the top position again in 2019. And even though Pelosi steered her party through four presidents, it does bring up the question, should there be age limits or even term limits when it comes to politics? Given the Senate term is six years, she would be close to 90 by the time her term ends. And Nikki Haley, who is running as a Republican president, presidential candidate has said that Washington, D.C. is the most elite nursing home in the U.S. <laughs> because there are so many people edging toward 80, if not past it, that are still reaping the benefits of a luxury political you, career. And they will say, well, you know, I still want to serve my country. Well, there are ways in the private sector that you could do yes. just the same. Or maybe even how about mentoring? How about giving yeah. somebody else a chance to do that because somebody gave you a chance at one age and you can come on as a consultant somewhat yeah. and really kind of lead them on and have some of these junior senators and junior politicians to be able to come in and actually make an, a difference. And I think term limits are the reason why it, things stay stagnant. Things will always be the way that they are. Yeah, if you don't have term limits, and I get the argument from both sides, but let's say maybe three term limits for a senator because you look at some of these people who served in the Senate for 20, 30, Nancy Pelosi, nearly, what, 40 years I think Strom Thurmond was, what, 90 something. Yeah, like, exactly. He, he and look, they've got deep pockets too, so there's not a lot of proof that they're just surviving on a senator's salary and affording homes all over the world and expensive cars and nice vacations. But I think it's not a bad idea. The, there, there's a lot of uh, age comes with wisdom and everything. Yes, and I think that's that why too. I say go into a consultant kind of Yeah. Thing. Exactly. We are going to be checking in with Jess, find out what's trending in the world. We also have more trending news and entertainment. Stick it around. You can get it all. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. It's time now to check in with our Daily Flash Latino host, Jessica Reyes, to get her take on what's happening and trending in the world. What's going on, Jessica? what's trending in fashion, social media, or even holiday decor, then I will be your go-to person. This is Trending with Jess. So what am I tackling today? Well, 
Fashion, of course. With New York Fashion Week all over social media, I would be crazy not to mention it. And in true Fashion Week vibes, we saw a little bit of everything from protests to fails. But I say we keep things on the positive side and start with celebrities who made us kind of jelly because we weren't invited. For the record, I'm expecting an invite for next year. I'm just saying. Hashtag just saying. All right, so this woman doesn't need an intro, but for the sake of professionalism, I'll do it. This right here is Boogie Down Bronx's very own Jennifer Lopez. This was her attending the Coach Spring Summer 2024 Ready to Wear Runway show. And of course, she slayed. The fit involved a bun, fringe jacket, and a pair of knee-high snakeskin boots that would make someone like myself have peeps questioning, why the heck am I wearing this when it's still pretty warm outside? But J-Lo is J-Lo, so ladies, take notes. Fringe is in, fringe has to be a part of your fall, spring, summer fit, even if it involves rocking it with your own accessories and maybe even with a bun. Like pieces with suede, cowboy boots, and beige seem to be the look. So yes, I too feel like looking into a vintage shop and seeing what I can find to fit. Now onto our next celebrity that we saw at the red carpet in New York for the Victoria's Secret show. Here's Priyanka Chopra, so beautiful. Miss Priyanka Jonas killed it with a see-through muted gold floor length dress. What I love about this fit is that it's something I can actually see us wearing very soon. I don't know about you, but I can see a version of this in our stores as a, as a New Year's Eve look, and I want you to remember me when you see it. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about Queen Gigi Hadid. I feel her look is very springish, but Gigi gets a free pass to do almost anything because Gigi is e Gigi, okay? So we're also glad she attended the Victoria's Secret celebration of the Tour 23, and she gave us color. She gave us hay. I'm here. Honestly, she gave me some Latina vibes during fall because that's one of the things about my culture that we've normalized, wearing bright colors all year long. So watch out. So are you thinking about going yellow this fall? Amongst fall color trends, many creative directors and designers showcased a smart and refreshing spin on yellows and neutrals. Like this outfit right here that gives us yellow, but in a more softened tone, almost adding in sprinkles of orange hues. When styled correctly, you can give the gloomy months um, some warmth. And if you're into yellow, go for more butter yellow or more on the golden side. Don't get hungry, okay? Now for something that always matches with yellow is denim. Everyone loves denim. This right here is, let's go ahead and take a look at this, uh, this picture of Giselle Bunchen at New York Fashion Week party. She clearly ditched the pants and opted for an oversized jean jacket. What I love about this new take on denim is how imperfect it can be. It's also something you can wear at any age with the proper accessories, of course. For example, this look right here, I snagged it from the peeps at Editorialist. Denim on denim can be intimidating, but this fall, feel free to go for it. Personally, I prefer, de prefer denim in different shades, but don't be afraid to take chances when it comes to fashion. Also, do not end this year without a denim skirt. I know, for me, it totally takes me back to summer back in the 80s and 90s, but denim skirts with a modern twist can most certainly be your bestie this year. Whether you plan on combining it with a casual tee, maybe you want to clean it up with a more casual business blouse, I promise it's going to work. All right, guys, so I want you to tell me on social media, what are you excited about during fall fashion? I hope it's a lot of it. Remember that Fringe is in and here to say and here to stay, ask JLo. Don't be afraid to keep some of your yellow pieces out for fall and just combine it with more neutral to tone it down, neutral colors. Experiment with denim. Mix and match multiple denim pieces. Don't be afraid if it's a little edgy. Trust me, you got this. And guys, I am so excited about doing this. So next time around, I'm going to have a little bit more that has to do with spooky season. Maybe that's why I'm wearing orange today. If you have any trends you want me to check out, don't forget to hit me up on social media. And that was Trending with Jess. What is KSA Entertainment? It's trending news, entertainment, lifestyle, KSA Entertainment, culture, KSA. it's love, it's food, it's family, KSA. it's life, it's shopping, it's empowerment, KSA, KSA Entertainment, it's fitness, it's travel, KSA, it's fun, it's engaging, it's Daily Flash, Daily Flash Latino, life, love, shopping. This is KSA Entertainment. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. You know, with COVID infections on the rise, many Americans are confused about how to keep themselves healthy this fall and even into the winter. Former United States Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams joins us now to make a sense of the science and even offers his recommendations. Doctor, first off, tell us about the current COVID situation, where we're at. Well, we know we're seeing 15,000 hospitalizations a week. 
Uh, we know that wastewater samples are telling us we're in a surge. But more importantly, uh, people need to understand that it's not just people who are older or people who we think of as sick. 75% of US adults have underlying conditions that put them at risk for complications to COVID-19. And a third of our current hospitalizations in the US are in adults age 18 to 64. And it's also impacting kids. I've got three teenagers. Half my daughter's soccer team was out last night um, due to a respiratory illness, which we know was likely COVID. We know that school districts in Kentucky and Texas had to put the entire school year on hold because of respiratory illnesses. So I want people to understand what's happening. And I want them to understand that a, a new vaccine, an updated vaccine, which is a good match for the current variants, uh, should be available within the next week or two uh, so that they should be prepared to talk to their health provider about whether or not this new vaccine is right for them. Okay, well, when and where should people actually get it? I would say uh, get it as soon as possible because we're in a surge. It's a good match. Um, and uh, you should be able to get it from the same place as you get your flu shot. As a matter of fact, the CDC has said that you can get your flu shot and your COVID shot at the same time. Uh, what, what I'm most worried about is vaccine hesitancy. And I talk about this in my new book, Crisis and Chaos, which is available on Amazon and, um, and on Barnes and Noble, this growing vaccine hesitancy. And the biggest way we can combat that is to give people the facts and encourage them to talk to their health provider so that they understand if they're at risk and they understand the benefits and risk of getting vaccinated. Oh, thank you, doctor, for that very important information. We're going to make sure we post this interview and so much more on our website, dailyflashshow.com. You'll find the links there. Big news for Melt Lovers, Chicken Salad Chick, the popular fast casual restaurant, has announced an exciting new addition to their menu, the Chick Melt. Joining us now to share the details and discuss some upcoming promotions is Melt Marketing Manager, Gabriel Shaman. Big news for Melt Lovers, Chicken Salad Chick is unveiling its newest menu item, the Chick Melt. The new addition will feature each guest's choice of one of Chicken Salad Chick's 12 plus made from scratch chicken salad flavors, paired with provolone cheese, all atop a toasted buttery croissant. The balance of the sandwich is golden brown, crispy exterior, and melted gooey cheese interior elevates the chicken salad flavors to a whole new level. As part of the menu item launch, Chicken Salad Chick guests can look forward to some exciting specials and giveaways. From September 18th to 23rd, Chicken Salad Chick is making the patty melt melt. Guests named Patty or something similar can receive a free Chick Melt at all locations. And because the Chick Melt delivers all the flavor without any fishy tuna melt breath, from October 25th to 27th, guests can exchange a can of tuna for a free Chick Melt at participating locations. All cans collected will be donated to a local food bank. To find a restaurant near you, visit chickensaladchick.com. I love chicken salad chicken. They are too. so good. And that drive through in our neighborhood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's un unbelievable. <laughs> uh, all righty. We are in a brand new segment here on the show. And this is what we love about it because we, we find out what you and America are actually talking about. It's called uh, Let's Get Flashed. Okay. Woo! And basically, we're, yeah, not that the way, oh, though, Matt. Sorry, sorry. Uh, but it is a way for people to kind of get out their inner feelings. Right. Just keep their clothes on when they do it. Yeah. All right. Here's what it is. We're going to give you a sitch and then we'll just talk about it. And sitch, basically, like we it. would love to hear back from you as well. Here's the sitch. A woman wants to know if she should get flashed or not for moving from a spot uh, someone wanted to propose on. Here's the story. A woman goes hiking so she can have a picnic in the beautiful spot in the mountains. She gets there, sets up the picnic, and starts eating when a man asks her to move so that he can propose to his girl that's in the exact same spot. He tells them, well, listen, you can wait. They start arguing. Is she wrong? Get flashed. This is like the airplane seat controversy like when a family says hey can you move so my loved one can sit next to me um, i think she should move i if the guy's proposing i, I mean i would think i would, I would be like a part to of it you're yes. a part of that person's yes. memory right it would, well you'd be part of that but it would also depend on how much setup she had like did she have a whole basket there you go. A chair? Yeah, good point she got there first so I don't, it depended on the setup. Really. Right when you yeah. said that, I thought about the airplane seat thing. Mm -hmm. So one time I was flying from Orlando to Seattle, right? And it was a family and they wanted me to move, but the person had a middle seat. So she, they wanted me to give no. up a, a, a nice aisle seat oh, no, no. And that's what to the middle seat. And I was like, this is like a four, and like, yeah. uh, and the guy was really cool about it. I go, yeah, but it's a middle seat. And he's like, oh, okay. 
But then I felt like the nope. the, the douche the, the whole flasher. flight. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, now in the meantime, I'm sitting where his kids are right here, and I'm in between Oy, his kids. And it's I think he should have offered me, look, can you sit by that window, and yes. then that way we're all together. Uh, yeah. Offer something comparable. Now Com I will say that's, this. That's that's a question. Yeah. Two drinks this, for the whole if, flight. Yeah. If the guy was planning to propose, then he should have gotten there early, right? There if that go. was his big moment, I don't put, know. Put a note down right there. Hey, yeah. around four o'clock, maybe don't. How much here. did you prepare for your proposal, Matt? You're the next one to get married. Well, I, I kind of winged it. I was I was waiting on the SpaceX launch to go. So I had to time it with that, and so it, delayed, <laughs> it delayed the right time because I got the ring two days before it, and they kept delaying it, so it worked out. Okay. Oh, so, so the days... The delayed, days kept pushing. He wasn't so. worried about a rocket overshadowing his... She was worried about the rocket. She was more worried about the rocket. About the, rocket. <laughs> the minute she got the rocket, she was like, okay, good. Very nice. Look out. Look down. Look down. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right, here's another way. Should this person get flashed? A woman asked if she should uh, actually be cutting off her pregnant sister off financially and telling her popping out babies without a baby daddy is dumb. Here's the story. The woman is fed up because she is financially taking care of her sister and nephew who is seven months old. Now, after knowing a guy for a few weeks, her sister gets knocked up again by a guy who doesn't work, and now she's paying for a third person with a fourth one on the way. Uh -uh. Was she wrong to cut her off? I'm going to say no. I mean, at some point, this woman's got to start taking responsibility for making these choices. Great that you want to have kids. That's wonderful. But what sort of example are you setting for your kids? I think kids? you're right, yeah. I'd cut her off, and plus, Maury's not around anymore to figure out who the baby daddies are, so <laughs> she'd be helping them out for a while. Let Maury take care of them, right? Yeah. I, I, I do th I, I, I'm, I'm along with you on that. Uh, being a parent, it's a little bit different. Where you'd be like, it, it sounds like that might be the dichotomy of it, like maybe they don't have any parents. You want to take care of your kids. However, the hardest thing, the absolute hardest thing you can say to your child, but the absolute best thing you can say to your child is no, because they yes. learn that lesson. And I think that's yeah. what you were alluding to. And once you get past that, you realize, look, I'm here for you. I'm going to help you by not helping you. Right. And I think at this point, that's where that family is. And the sister's yeah. probably doing more harm financially taking care of her than teaching her to be responsible. I agree with that. We would love to know what you think. Drop us a message at flash at dailyflashshow.com. We got more trendy news and entertainment coming up right after this. All right, welcome back to Daily Flash. Let's see what some of our favorite music stars are up to so that we don't want to miss a beat. Get it started, AJ. Okay, here we go. Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner are speaking out after news broke. The two are ending their marriage. Now, in a joint statement posted to both of their social media accounts, the two stars said they are parting on the friendliest of terms after four wonderful years uh, of marriage yeah, yeah, yeah. and have mutually decided to end it. <laughs> the Jonas Brothers member filed for divorce in Florida's Miami-Dade County and stated, in court documents, the marriage between the parties is broken. The former couple met in 2016, married during two ceremonies in 2019. <laughs> the first was a surprise Las Vegas wedding in May after attending the Billboard Music Awards where the Jonas Brothers had just performed. Then they threw a lavish wedding at the end of June in southern France. Yeah. Mitch. You got to be careful when you get off that energy off the stage yes. not to take it too far. <laughs> Sounds like that's what he did. We go now to Ozzy Osbourne. He recently turned a corner with his recovery from surgery following an injury stemming from a 2019 fall. In July, Ozzy had to make a tough decision to withdraw from the upcoming Power Trip Festival, which could have seen him co-headlining alongside with Metallica, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, Ooh. and others, saying his body is telling him, is this not ready yet? <laughs> That's my Ozzy Osbourne. That's his good, wife man. and his manager, Sharon Osbourne, says that the family is waiting for the all clear from Ozzy's doctor so they can make a move back to England. That's a decision they made over a year ago. Ozzy was in the middle of his No More Tours 2 trek, his final world tour in 2018, when a staph infection forced him off the road. Shortly in 2019, as he was planning to return back to the road, he fell in the middle of the night, aggravated a spinal injury he had nearly a quad bike accident back in 2003. We Oof. wish Ozzy a speedy and recovery very good health recovery. Yes, absolutely. And the Rolling Stones announced their new album, Hackney Diamonds, and have premiered the video for the first single, The Hard Rockin' Angry. It's the band's first full album of original music since 2005's A Bigger Bang, and their first since the death of drummer Charlie Watt. Jagger explained the title Hackney Diamonds is slang for what happens to windshields when someone gets rowdy on a night out. Uh. The band also unveiled the track list for the album, which contains 12 songs, though Jagger said they'd recorded 12 23 for it. It was also revealed Lady Gaga sings on one of the songs. Ooh, cool. The band ended up cutting the album all over the world. I thought they were done. I thought they were tired. No way, dude. They, they got to keep going with those steel wheels. But <laughs> we are all done for today, at we least. Are. We'll be back tomorrow for our new reunion tour as well. We want to thank all y'all for joining us.
speaking, everybody. We'll see you when we look at you. It's our crew that helps us put us all together.